literally around Europe, live in hiding for almost a year, uh, live in exile for two years, and my ex-partner went to prison twice because we reported state-sponsored murder. We also uh, saw friends and families being arrested, and we saw journalists being arrested and prosecuted, and in some cases convicted, for daring to report these disclosures. Now, as I said, there's the Official Secrets Act, but there's a, another battery of behind-the-scenes means that they can use to stifle dissent in the UK. These include things, include things like civil law injunctions, which they applied against the media and against the whistleblowers. Uh, there are also more informal networks of um, things like the D-Notice Committee in the UK, which is a volunteer committee of senior media people as well as intelligence people who censor themselves. And we also have a sort of charm circle of journalists who write about these issues, who, um, whose jobs de depend on reporting what they are told to report. So they self-censor as well. It's a cultural thing. And this is a major problem in our society, I think, certainly in the UK, but in many other countries too, because you end up with a closed groupthink in the intelligence community. You end up in a situation where people within government are too frightened to speak out, which then leads to illegal wars based on lies, as we saw in the UK, uh, where we see things like uh, the application of torture by states like the US and the UK. People are too frightened to speak out. In fact, recently in the UK there have been a number of intelligence officers who appear to have perjured themselves in UK courts by saying, no, 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 of course we weren't involved in the torture of terrorist suspects, but lo and behold, they were. And of course we also saw um, a document, a very notorious document that was leaked called the Downing Street Memo. And in this, it recorded a, the minutes of a meeting between Tony Blair and his advisors in the run-up to the Iraq war. And the head of MI6, the external intelligence gathering organization, was recorded to have said that the facts were being fitted around the policy, the predetermined policy, the decision to go to war. Now, this is why we need whistleblowers. This is why we need leaks, so that we can hold the governments and the intelligence agencies to account. This is what our media should be doing, but they're frightened off. And I really wish that WikiLeaks had been established in 1997 rather than 2007. So it's a real privilege to be here, and um, please all keep pushing for more and more disclosure and more transparency and, and accountability of government. Thank you. Hello, can everyone hear me? Good. Um, so at WikiLeaks, we are kind of a canary in the coal mine because we specialize in taking uh, material that is censored or is uh, legally injuncted, uh, that is classified, that people really don't want revealed and presenting it to the world. Uh, about once every two weeks, uh, someone threatens to sue us and that goes forward to a next level about once every month. However, we started out under the basis that the least transparent governments in Africa uh, and the former Soviet Union were the ones that would benefit the most uh, from uh, publishing revelations, getting stuff out to the, to the public, revealing corruption. But it turns out it's a global problem. When money is laundered from Kenya by the president, it goes into Swiss banks, it goes into London banks, it goes into property in Australia. Similarly, censorship is a global problem. Uh, censorship is in fact at a technological level led by the West. So-called democracies like uh, the United Kingdom have secret courts with secret court hearings that produce secret orders demanding that the press censor uh, papers. They've demanded it of us where we release some of those court uh, papers. And now as every form of media moves onto the internet, newspapers, TV, the communications between political parties and their supporters, communications between every individual here in this room. We find a position where technological censorship is able to affect probably what will be every media uh, in the world. Now some of you may have known that we have released detailed secret blacklists of censorship uh, from many countries, uh, many times in fact uh, from Thailand from China, uh, from Australia, from Norway, from Denmark. 
uh, and we hope from Germany later on. Uh, these countries swap information on these lists. And when the lists are secret, when they're kept out of sight, there is no transparency. Uh, in the case of Australia, when we released the secret censorship uh, blacklist, it was found that only 32% uh, of the list was related to underage images at some stage. But politically, it had been pushed as a mechanism to combat child pornography, and that's probably a story uh, familiar to many of you uh, in this room. So what is the big picture? Why is this happening now between governments? Why are they responding in the same way? Well, the internet has been a fixed target for about eight years, and at the same time, it's become more and more important politically and economically. So these power interests in the various countries have been moving together to try and take control uh, of something that um, threatens their interests. Whenever states come together into a super state like the European Union or states all over the world are coming together informally, becoming globalised informally uh, into uh, a compatible union of laws, um, you have a situation where the new standard is to be defined. And that's the battle at the moment. What is the new standard for publishing freedoms? What is the new standard for communication? We're protected somewhat by, by placing our information in different states, by playing one state off against another. But as you can see what's happening with Europe, uh, a new standard is being developing that's compatible between countries. And we will see a new legal standard compatible uh, between most of the industrialised countries of the world. So is that standard to be the standard of China? Or is it to be the standard of the Netherlands? Is it to be the standard of the most free country or the least free country? So we have an opportunity to push that standard to be the union of press protection freedoms, the union of whistleblower freedoms and the union of communications freedoms and not their intersection. So, um, are there any comments or questions at this point in time that anyone would want to follow up with it in the audience? Um, if not, uh, is it, or on the panel? Yeah, sorry. There is a mic in the middle. Just um, line up, and maybe we can have Karen and. Hi. It's okay? Like that. Okay. Um, I just, it's just a little remark about um, Annie's comment of the OSA, the Official Secrets Act. It's um, basically implemented here in the Netherlands as well. Just a couple of months ago, uh, two journalists were detained from the Telegraph newspaper, who released um, state secrets, um, which basically, um, I, well, I believe every journalist has the duty to release state secrets if that is to the general interest of the public. So just want to point out to everyone in the audience that it is happening here as well. So 